Everyone in the fitness industry says that weight loss is just about calories in, calories out. I, on the other hand, was saying that weight loss isn't about calories at all, but is about adaptation. Doing a specific kind of activity that causes the body to adapt by getting rid of fat, which is body propulsion. So let's look at the science and figure out right now who's right. If everyone in the fitness industry is right about fat loss being simply about calories in, calories out, then any way of burning a certain amount of calories should cause an equal amount of fat loss relative to other ways of burning the same amount of calories. But if I'm right, then activities that involve powerfully propelling the entire body, even when they burn an equal amount of calories or even sometimes less calories, should cause much greater fat loss. We need to look at forms of exercise that do not involve propelling the entire body and see if they cause fat loss. In fact, nearly all of the exercise done by the millions of people around the world trying to lose fat does not involve body propulsion. So I'm gonna give you three examples here. One, swimming. Research published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine reviewing all the studies on swimming and weight loss shows that, quote, swimming has no effect on weight loss. Now, technically speaking, swimming is actually a body propulsion exercise. However, because swimming takes place in water, an anti-gravity environment, your body weight actually no longer matters. That means even though you're technically propelling your body, you're not actually propelling your body weight. That means no need to adapt to that activity to get better at the activity by decreasing body weight or body fat. One interesting study compared college swimmers to college runners and found that even though dietary calories and calories burned were nearly equal, the female runners had a very small body fat percentage, about 12%, which is very lean for a woman, while the female swimmers had a whopping 20%. The male runners had 7% body fat, while the male swimmers had over 15% body fat. In other words, the swimmers had roughly 200% more body fat than the runners who are burning and eating the same amount of calories. If the activity does not involve using the muscles to work against the entire weight of the body, then you can burn all the calories you want, but it will not result in any fat loss whatsoever. Weightlifting is another example of non-body propulsion exercise. And I'm gonna give you two studies proving this. Study number one showed that after six months of weightlifting, three hours per week, they found no fat loss whatsoever. Six months, three hours a week. Study number two looked at women who got three hours a week of personal training for six months. So professional instruction in weight training, they found no reduction in fat relative to a control group of women that spent those six months doing nothing. This doesn't make any sense when you look at it in the calories in, calories out model. Weightlifting burns lots of calories, so it should lead to fat loss. So why doesn't it? Because weightlifting does not involve body proportion. You have a mostly stationary body and you move around external objects like barbells and dumbbells. Your body weight is irrelevant to virtually all weightlifting movements. If you wanna do a bench press while you're laying on your back, pressing up a bar with 200 or 300 pounds on it, strength matters a lot. Think about it logically. Does having a big fat belly or a six pack have any real relevance to you being good at bench pressing? No, it doesn't. That's why you commonly see champion weightlifters that weightlift for hours each day who are either overweight or even obese. Regardless of calories burned, no propulsion of your own body means no fat loss. And this is an area that's gonna shock a lot of people because there is an absolutely massive gap between what people in the fitness industry teach and what the science actually shows. Contrary to popular belief, virtually all studies done on cardio and interval training using cardio machines fail to show any significant fat loss. Let's look at intervals first. It's become very trendy in the fitness industry in the last few years to talk about how much better intervals are for fat loss compared to regular cardio. And they talk of the famous Tremblay study and claim that the study showed nine times greater fat loss than regular cardio. What they conveniently leave out are the actual numbers. 
The Tremblay study showed that after five months of interval training, people lost 1.1 pound. So if doing interval training for the next five months, several times a week, to lose one pound sounds like an exciting and revolutionary new fat loss method to you, then have at it. Personally, I'm not real impressed with five months of training leading to a loss of one pound. Now, when it comes to cardio, believe it or not, dozens of scientific studies prove that cardio does not cause any significant amount of fat loss. Here's just a few quotes from the exercise scientist researchers reviewing the science on cardio and fat loss. Moderate aerobic exercise training has a minor, non-significant effect on fat mass. Another quote, despite the popular support for aerobic training, it does not appear to significantly accelerate fat loss, even when combined with a low calorie diet. They are a waste of time, no matter how many calories you burn. What all of this very clearly shows, the forms of exercise done by nearly all of the millions of people in search of fat loss that do not involve body propulsion, cardio and intervals in the cardio machines, and weight training, fail when it comes to fat loss. The science proves that the secret of fat loss is that it's about adaptation. The final thing we need to examine is the difference between low intensity body propulsion, like distance running, and high intensity body propulsion, like sprinting or gymnastics. Both of these will reduce body weight, but in different ways. The body will always try to get rid of as much extra weight that doesn't help the activity. The only difference between these two activities is whether your body prioritizes muscle loss and you end up with a physique like you see in distance runners, or whether your body prioritizes fat loss and you end up with a physique like you see in sprinters. This is exactly what the research shows. This study used two groups of athletes. They put one group on a jogging cardio program and the other on a sprinting program. The people on the jogging program did more hours of exercise and actually burned significantly more calories than the sprinters. Yet, the sprinters lost 4.4 pounds of fat. By the way, in already very lean athletes, 4.4 pounds of fat lost is a whole lot. The cardio group lost no fat whatsoever, but they did lose 3.1 pounds of muscle. Now, another study did the same comparison of jogging to sprinting, and this one is even more important. The joggers did three 45 minute jogs per week, and the sprinters did three 15 minute workouts of which, by the way, they only did about less than three minutes of actual exercise during those workouts. So after six weeks, the joggers had done a total exercise time of 13.5 hours, and they had burned over 6,000 total calories over the course of those six weeks. The sprinters had a total exercise time of only 45 minutes for those six weeks, and they burned only about 1,500 calories. Yet, when they analyzed their body fat, what they found was remarkable. The sprinters lost over 400% more fat, 4.4 pounds compared to only 1.1 pound for the joggers. So, they did a tiny fraction of the total amount of exercise, burned about a quarter as many calories, and lost 400% more fat. This is proof that fat loss is about adaptation, not calories. Cardio causes weight loss, but preferentially from muscle, in exactly the same way that aging and degenerative disease cause a loss of muscle. Always consider that before thinking that going for a jog is a good way to get fat loss.